Yeah, no, but so I just got up for that window. It was all of westbound I-70. That was where the most flooding was at. System failure. Our systems aren't 100% complete. A $1.2 billion road project turned into a lake. We're getting new details on what caused the new sections of I-70 to flood in last night's heavy storms, shutting down the interstate for hours and stranding drivers. We're going to see exactly what happened and try to remediate that as quickly as possible. And saving lives. Put them both on his shoulder. He didn't, he wasn't feared or nothing. It was just like a natural instinct. Dozens of people across Denver, including a baby, pulled out of floodwaters. They didn't hesitate. And that's what a true hero is. The major storms are gone for the metro for tonight. A few storms over southern Colorado coming up hot days ahead. Colorado roads turned into rivers. Heavy storms flood parts of the Denver metro, leaving dozens of people stranded and in need of rescue. What a day that was. Good evening. Glad you're with us tonight on Denver 7 News at 5. I'm Shannon Ogden. And I'm Amy Wattis. Flash floods closed several Colorado roads last night, including a section of the newly completed I-70. Nearly 30 people had to be rescued by Denver Fire yesterday. Dispatchers taking nearly 80 calls for water rescues. Eight people were rescued just at 38th and Blake, including an infant. At 14th and Cremaria, Denver Fire rescued six people. Three children and eight adults were rescued at I-70 and York. Tonight, we have team coverage on those rescues and new information on the system failure and the I-70 project. Denver 7's Megan Lopez live near the interstate. Megan, with $1.2 billion price tag, many people are wondering how it could have gone so wrong there on I-70. Yeah, that's right, Shannon. The first thing that you're going to hear from CDOT and from the contractor that's working on this Central 70 project, Cuit, is that construction is still underway. I mean, you can see it right behind me. There's construction all over the place here. And so the storm drain system's not complete. The road work's obviously not complete. And obviously, last night did not go as it was intended. So now the contractor and CDOT are doing this investigation, trying to figure out what happened and changing their processes in the meantime. Between the blue skies and typical traffic flow, you'd never guess that less than 24 hours ago, this area of I-70 looked like this. Heavy rain flooded the highway near York, right where the Central 70 project is underway. Delivery driver Tyru basically, I was driving back. I finished my route. Was one of the dozens of drivers on the road at the time of the flooding. Oh, and sure enough, it was like a wall just formed right on top of this, came out of nowhere. My windshield wipers could not keep up with cleaning. By the time I get one wipe, I would uh, be completely covered in, in water again. He was able to capture this video. Denver Fire had to rescue 11 people from this section of I-70. Luckily, Rue was able to make it through. I was just like, I'm not stopping. Whatever I do, I'm not stopping because this thing is just going to turn into a gigantic boat. Now CDOT and contractor Kewitt are trying to figure out what caused the flooding. We need to conduct a thorough investigation to see what exactly happened. Was there a system failure? There are systems under this bridge that are supposed to drain the water. They will suck the water out of the lower section of I-70 and it'll be pulled to an off-site uh, pump station. The water is then cleaned and then pumped into the South Platte River. The system should have been able to handle a 100-year flooding event, but that's not what happened this time around. In a statement, Kewitt said, quote, an error in the drainage pump system appears to have prevented the pumps from turning on automatically. Once this was determined, Kewitt turned on the pumps manually. After the pumps turned on, the area was drained in a short period of time. The contractor went on to say that the drainage project system isn't complete yet, but they're confident it will work properly. Until then, they're putting processes in place to make sure the pumps turn on during heavy rains. But Denver City Councilwoman Candy C. DeBaca says it's too little too late. That CDOT should be considering a lawsuit against that contractor. These are situations that should not happen so soon after these projects are completed. So what about those drivers whose cars were flooded out? Well, I spoke with Kewitt this afternoon and they said they're working with the towing companies to identify those drivers and they're working with the company Jorgensen in order to start a claims process. So if you were on the highway when it was flooded here on I-70 and your car suffered from water damage, go ahead and contact Kewitt. I'm live on I-70 in York. Megan Lopez, number seven. Just incredible. Megan, thank you for that. So it's one thing to say Denver Fire rescued at least 29 people from the floods. It's another thing when you see the videos of this heroism. Why don't you take a look here? So many viewers capture these incredible moments on their phone. 
One of them spoke with Denver 7's Jacqueline Allen. Jacqueline is live at fire station number one in Denver. That's where uh, the water team is based. Jacqueline, these firefighters, they're getting attention from around the world tonight. That's right, because their heroism was captured on camera for all the world to see. These are actually the wetsuits that they used last night. They're drying them out right now. That's what they're more worried about. They also used this specialized water rescue rig that's here at fire department headquarters. But, you know, it's not the tools that save lives. It's the people who were brave enough to dive right in. See, your car was seen. Don't go. When a flash flood inundates this Denver underpass, an entire family is trapped, climbing onto their minivan to wait. We just stopped and pulled over. Like, what did we do? What did we do? We freaked out. Eli Espinoza and his brother immediately recognized the danger. Bro, look at, look at this. Hey, make way, make way, firefighters. Shooting this video as firefighters come to the rescue. I say it's real strength and bravery right there. <laughs> Eli's watching in awe as one rescuer lifts two small children into his arms, wading in waist deep, murky water. This is when he was walking back and had them both on his shoulders. Oh, yeah, he was definitely strong to do that. <laughs> that takes a lot of body strength. It's hard to even watch as rescuers carry one child after the next, including this infant, to safety. The baby doesn't even cry. They were some tough kiddos. Denver Fire Lieutenant J.D. Chisholm served on this same water rescue team for years. He was wearing a swift water suit just like this one. And says this is what they train for every Sunday. To ensure while he's carrying those kids that he doesn't fall in the water, he's going to walk backwards to make sure that that's the safest method of getting those kiddos out. Do you handle children differently than you do adults? Anybody who's a parent or who has spent a lot of time with children knows uh, the calmer we can be when we're talking to them, the calmer we can be to distract them from the actual events that are taking place, then we can uh, get them to a safer environment. Not only did they rescue eight people at this underpass, witnesses say fire crews went above and beyond. At the end, the fighter fighter walked out with the pizza and the pizza was still good and he was like, well, we got dinner and everyone just started laughing. It's one thing to say in all firefighters rescued 29 people in Denver in this flood. It's another thing to see what that kind of bravery looks like in action. Oh, I'll describe them as heroes. They went into the water in a heartbeat. They didn't hesitate. And that's what a true hero is. Yes, it is. And they tell me that water was freezing cold. It had melted hail in it. So it's basically ice water. Also, the guy you saw holding children on both shoulders, he's a tri triathlete, I'm told. So the lieutenant says he's very fit. And they say really the most amazing thing about last night wasn't just the firefighters. They got many reports of citizens rescuing citizens. No equipment, no gear, just bravery. And a little luck, obviously. Reporting live, Jacqueline Allen, Denver 7. Thank you, Jacqueline. Just incredible. Now, Waterworld got too much water in the storms. Parts of the park were damaged last night, and at least six attractions are now closed or had a delayed opening today. Waterworld is working to fix all of the damaged rides in sections of the park. Denver wasn't the only place hit hard by yesterday's storms. The rains essentially turned areas at the Larimer County Fair into a mini lake. These photos were sent to us from Jackson in the Discover Colorado through your photos Facebook page. The fairgrounds did open back up today. And guitarist Joe Bonamassa wants to make sure his fans get the show they deserve despite the storms last night. Now his show last night at Red Rocks didn't start until 1015 because of the rain. So he's inviting anyone who had tickets to last night to come back to tonight's performance. And if you are one of those fans, you want to race off to Red Rocks, you can find a link to get your ticket right now on AXS.com. Well, tonight we are seeing some scattered showers in the mountains, but Denver Metro should be clear of any heavy storms for the next few days. And Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson will have the full seven day forecast a little later in the newscast. Now for the 24 seven look at the weather in your neighborhood, you can always visit the DenverChannel.com or the free Denver 7 Plus app. All right, we have some breaking news. Former President Trump has confirmed the FBA, uh, FBI has raided his home resort of Mar-a-Lago -Lar -Lar in Florida. The former president put out a statement saying FBI agents broke into a safe at the resort. Trump says, quote, unannounced raid on my home was not necessary or appropriate. Now, again, this is just happening right now. We are working to get more details on the raid, and I promise we'll bring them to you once we learn more. An El Paso County deputy was shot and killed in a shooting just south of Colorado Springs last night. 37-year-old deputy Andrew Peary was killed responding to a shooting at a home 
in security. A woman was also killed that night by the man police believe killed Deputy Peary. That male suspect then died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Deputy Peary had been with the sheriff's office since 2016 and is survived by his wife and two children. We have details on how to make a donation to his family right now for you on the DenverChannel.com. Police in Denver are searching for this man you see on your screen. They believe he hit an officer with their car. The hit and run happened back in July near Alameda and Zenobia when officers were responding to a crash. One of the drivers, Joshua Escabel, sped off hitting an officer who was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. Police say the car Escabel was driving was a stolen vehicle when he hit that officer. Now, if you have any details about this crime or Escabel, call Denver Police. Well, the city of Denver has reached a settlement with Red Rocks attendees who were charged extra for wheelchair accessible seats. This federal lawsuit alleges that concert goers between 2018 and 20 were overcharged for ADA accessible seats. Now those overcharges accounted for more than 1800 tickets at nearly 200 shows. The city of Denver owns Red Rocks Amphitheater and $47,000 now will be paid out by the city to those who were overcharged. Since I didn't get a full check, I don't think I would have been able to pay rent. Not getting paid after getting sick. A United Airlines employee is accusing the airline of breaking state law for not paying her for taking COVID-19 sick leave. It just seems like you're just like another number to them and their corporation. And fellow actors honor Olivia Newton-John, who has lost her battle with breast cancer. I'm hopelessly devoted to you. 